to get us started, okay, Zipforms users, come learn about TMS. No, thank you. Okay. So, um, and I don't need this either, so I'm going to X this out. This is a welcome to Zipforms Plus. Go to the Learning Center. Okay, great. Thank you very much. I don't need that. So I'm going to do away with that. So this is, um, there's two ways that you can look at your screen, which is one is in these cards and one is just a list. Totally up to you how you set it, right? You can change that up here. I kind of like the cards. Um, some of these are, you can see here, I've got blanks, right? I've got test files open, so because I make a lot of these for um, uh, classes and stuff. But um, they're also um, totally realistic. These are my real files. So they get all mixed in. So yours will be blank. And to set up a file, or maybe you guys already have one in there, right? To set up a file, we're going to hit this new button right here. See the new button? OK. So just to be clear, oh, OK, we're doing a listing. So we're going to pick the listing. And we're going to get this box that asks us to fill it out. Well, what's this listing called? So I recommend that you get in the habit of naming your files, both in zip forms and in command and anywhere, by the address, comma, last name of your client. So we can make this um, 2040 County Coa Road, comma, Stroud. That's my husband at my home. No. <laughs> so I'm just, right, I'm just doing a test. Um, a test um, file. So um, that's how I write. And the reason why you want to do that is you are going to remember the properties that you sold. You're not necessarily going to remember which client you sold them to. It's really interesting. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking I would remember the opposite. Yeah, and, and since you've got it this way, you can find it both ways. Okay. And same in command. If you do comma or semicolon and then your client's name, you can search it by your client's name as well as by the address. It's very helpful. Um, so now we're saying, what is this? Well, this is resident. Are we doing a residence? Do residential. I want to do a residential. Okay. And is this active? Yes, it is. And now we go to select the template. See that here? Mm -hmm. And over on the right is a little pull down menu, and you're going to go there and you're going to select. Well, what are we doing here? Are we listing a condo? Are we listing land? Are we listing single family? Bingo. We're listing single family. And that's all we need to do. And then this is where the KW pre filled ones are. Template. The operative word being template. You must select these templates. Yeah. And when you go there, right, notice the templates are all called global. Mm -hmm. You go, is that me? So when you come here and you can't see these, that means you're not in the Keller Williams zip forms. This is a Keller Williams feature, not a zip forms feature. That's why it's important to see that you can see them. Can everybody see these in your computers? Yes. Great. So you're all in the correct zip form. Some people somehow manage to not go there. So that's important. So global just means they're available to all of us, OK, as opposed to just my own template. Yeah. Great. So we pick the one we want. Um, and um, that's all we need. We don't need to make comments here. We hit save. Our templates, right? 
Um, so it's best that you just stay in the gray. So now we're in the gray here, and we've got um, the summary open. There's a tab for parties, for documents, for checklists, notes, history, and services. So we're in the summary page. And you can now go into the summary page and um, add some information or not use the summary page. Um, people use this differently. I don't particularly like the summary page. Um, things change and now I have to remember where they are and I prefer to work in my contracts. I'm just old fashioned because I had a zip form so I didn't have a summary page. And da -da 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 -da. So, um, but how do you do this? You just go to the pencil and you say, let's put in the street address, right? And you can add your street address right here and your city. And since this is a listing, it's not likely to change. If you're working with a buyer, the buyer might submit an offer to something and that doesn't get accepted. So now what do you do? Start a whole new file for a new transaction, right? You could just delete that purchase contract and put in a new one. So it's up to you how you want to how you want to manage things. Is this the part though that if you fill it here so at this moment yeah, then it prefills? It'll so prefill it either pages. way. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, that's that's the point. However, I do like going to parties because in this instance, um, or in any instance, chances are my client isn't going to change, yeah. right? So I'm going to go here, and so I'm the listing agent and broker. Why it does that, I don't know. But I'm going to go to seller one, right? And I'm going to open a box for seller one and create my seller one in here so that the seller is always in there. So I'm going to go Sam and Sneed, and I need an email form, so it's Sam Sneed at AOL.com is what I'm going to put here. And you can put, you know, again, as much or as, as you want and as necessary, and then you go to the bottom and you just hit save. And when we do that, lo and behold, there is a card for my seller. Okay. To fill in ourselves as listing brokers? Listing agent broker? Well, let's see here. It should. Um, So um, it should fill it in so I can put myself there, right? I can go Marion Power and license number. Agent ID. Is that just? Uh, I wouldn't worry about it. It could be the ID in MLS, but I wouldn't worry about it. It's your license number that you care. And I'm going to put my email in there, right? It will leave the default as say as contact. Say what? There's a, see the green check? Save as contact, save to zip, CRM. Yeah, save as contact is a good idea. So now I'm going to go in here, first name of Keller Williams, um, that's the firm name. And now I get to fill in the broker's name, right? So who's my broker is Kao Nagal. And his email and now I've got my broker in there as well as the listing broker, right? And that's helpful because it's the listing broker that's going to have to sign the listing agreement. It's also the listing broker who's going to have to sign the bottom of a purchase contract when we get an offer. Right? So um, remember the tab said listing agent and broker? It's because there's two names here. And by the way, that's relatively new. Like they literally changed all the titles and the way they did this just a couple of months ago. So you just kind of got to keep browsing around and noticing that things are changing. So now I've got 
even though it's just the card made out for Marion Haller, it knows, I know that my broker is in there too, right? So that's really helpful. Okay, I'm gonna move on. Are we ready? We're going to documents. So click on the documents tab, the next one over. And this is how you know that you pulled a template or that you forgot. Because if there are no documents in your documents section, then you forgot to pull a template. Because what part of our templates does is it pulls the documents in that we think you're gonna need for this transaction. So in this case, we're gonna pull in an exclusive right to sell listing contract, a single family residential data input form, right? If it's a condo, it would be a condo input form. And a dual agency consent addendum as a minimum. Right? So you see the template starts here already. If you were just to open a transaction without pulling a template, this would be empty. So then how would you fill it? Or how would how do you fill if you now want something else in there? Like right now I'm gonna say, I want my seller's disclosure right away because I deal with it up front. I get my seller to fill those out before I even list the property, right? So here's how you add forms to your file. This big blue all forms button up here, I click on that. And the first thing I want you to notice is that there are libraries. Do you see this right here? It's form libraries and there's a little pull down menu. All of our forms, well let's put it 98% of our forms, come from the Hawaii Association of Realtors. It's a benefit that we get from the state association. They produce our forms and they give us zip forms for free. This is a benefit we get for our dues. So if I want other forms that are from the HAR library, I wanna make sure I have the HAR library. However, if I needed another form from the Maui Association of Realtors, here is the Maui Association of Realtors Library. See that? So I might go to that and go, well, what do we got here? Oh, a change order form is here. That's very handy. So I don't know if you're aware, but each island has a different MLS. The other islands don't use Paragon. Our change order form is a Paragon form. So every island has a different change order form. What's a change order form? What do you think that's for? Changing your listing. If you need to change the price, or if you need to change something in the listing that is like pertinent, um, you're gonna need to get your seller's approval and your broker's approval. That's to change anything on a listing that's already published? Well, if you change something major. You know, if you go in and change a sentence or, you know, add a kind of nice descriptive sentence, fine. But if you were to take, for instance, a, um, I just had an agent with a 1,372 square foot property, but there was a non-conforming illegal ohana. So how are we going to list this ohana? And so we agreed to increase the square footage in the listing. So he needed to go get permission from his seller to do that, right? It's kind of material. Um, so price, something as material as that. And some sellers are very fussy about how you describe their property. So if you're gonna change the description, they're gonna to wanna to know. Or let's say you agreed with the seller to put a, um, all offers please include an as is addendum. Mm -hmm. That you wanna ask for that in the realtor remarks and you forgot, but you already talked about it, right? He already said, include an as is addendum. So now you don't need his approval again. You just forgot, you need to go in and do that, right? So you wouldn't need a change order for that. So how do you go into it without a change order form? Well, that's, you need to take the how to enter that's a listing class. That's okay. Paragon, that's, that's not different. zip forms, right? Okay. Yeah. So that's a, that's a different class, yeah. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, the other thing that's important to notice here is um, the huh? Isn't that interesting? There is no list.
listing waiver here. So a listing waiver, an MLS waiver form, and I'll show you where to get that. That's available in Paragon. It should really be there. Is the form that says, um, we don't want to be on the MLS. We don't want to be on the MLS. You know, like you can list it now. You can you can talk about it. You can market it, but we don't want to be on the MLS. So now you have to sign a listing agreement that starts today, and an MLS waiver form that says you understand all the benefits of MLS and you still opt out. And they go, yeah, we opt out of the MLS until January 15th, whatever. And now you've got that form signed, now you send a copy of that to the Realtors Association. If you do not, and you start talking about this listing, and an agent goes to look for the listing, and then says to the Realtors Association, Terry was talking about some listing up in Kula, I don't see it, um, like, what's going on here? They're gonna look in their file, and they go, oh yeah, we have Terry's uh, MLS waiver form, she, she's, uh, she's all good. If they can't do that, you can't find $250. Whoa. <laughs> so just be aware of that. There are fines associated with our MLS, right? What would their reasons be for not wanting to be on MLS? Maybe if they're celebrities. Uh, sometimes privacy is an issue. Sometimes, um, sometimes um, people want you to be able to talk about the property, but they want to spend some time fixing it up. So that's kind of a funny one because now you want to say, really, do I want to show it even before it's fix fixed up or how do we want to do this? So it's a conversation with your seller as to how you want to deal with that, right? Uh, there's pros and cons. And um, some sellers say, yeah, I want to fix it up so that, you know, but I'm not gonna, if you show it earlier and it's not fixed up yet, I'm not reducing my price because this is what I want for it, right? Yeah, that kind of thing, so, all right. Um, uh, I'm, anyway, so this is our library, so I just want to make you aware that there are different libraries here, and it should default to the Hawaii Association of Realtors Library, which is the most common document. So I'm going to go right here now, and it's in alphabetical order, and it's the seller's real property disclosure statement I want. So I'm going to go down to S, and there it is, seller's real property disclosure statement, and you'll notice there's three of them. The reason there are three is because some properties have three units. So every unit has to have its own seller's disclosure. A little excessive, but that's the way it's done. Okay. So we just have one, so we're going to pull this and just click on it. And you'll notice it appears right in our list here. And now how do we get out of here? You just click on that gray field anywhere to get out of here and it'll let you out. Just click on the anywhere here, okay? Okay, so we're going to go to the exclusive right to sell listing contract and open that up. And um, your listing agreement is four and a half pages long, so not terribly onerous, and it is a great guide to help you have conversation with your client. It's actually a pretty useful tool. Um, so it's not just to be, you know, just for signature. So getting to know it is very helpful. So you can see here, this is our filled in template, right? You see that Keller Williams is filled in and our license number is filled in and our phone number and our address and it knows me because I put myself in as the agent. Right? So it filled me in here. That's not part of the template. You should have your name there if you put your name in as the agent. Got it? Okay. And because we put our buyer in, or excuse me, our seller in at the beginning on that tab, our seller already appears here. See that? Yeah. So very handy. However, let's start at the top. top. The property address, when you click on that, is going to be whatever your test address is. Yeah. In, um, it's in Kahului and Hawaii and 96732, whatever. And 
And so that little box comes up and you can continue on. I'm just going to share with you here that when you go into the box and you've got a condo, right? Your condo address is, let's say, at 777 South Kihei Road, Unit 230. So always be sure to name the unit number. People forget the unit number all the time in, in the property address. And you need, you need the new unit number. Yes, exactly. Um, if you can fit in here and go Kihei Resort, that would be great, and in this instance, it fits. Oftentimes, it doesn't. So I build it in in front of the city, because the city is usually pretty short and has lots of room, so you can fill your condo name in. So these forms don't have a condo name hookup, right? But we all know everything by our condo name, so it just helps to put in the name of the condo video complex. All right, and then you just click outside somewhere, and there's your address. And now we've got our tax map key number. Now, where do we get our tax map key number? Pardon me? The county online county number? Right, and you can do that right here already, right? So if you go here, you can go to Realist, and you can put in an address and look for it. Let's assume that you can find this property in Paragon. It had never been listed before. So now you've got to research, how do I find this um, tax record? So Realist is a way to help us do that, but right now I'm being blocked. Why am I being blocked? Yeah, but it's not giving me anything Load, like usually it, it says click here. Yeah, I do. You do. So did I. Yeah, it's not doing anything. Oh, they, did you get something? Anybody else having trouble? I Thank you. 
right, so I'm going to go back to my um, documents. My document. Um, I'm going to go back to my document, and here it is. So what did I say it was? I can look at the tax record and then go 27002. Here's what's wrong. No, nope. it goes into these pungas. Okay. Um, what's missing is the island number. The reason oh. the tax record doesn't show the first number is because this there they are the taxes for Maui County only. So they don't bother including the island of Maui, which is number two. So we have to add two, and then it's two. What's my number? Seven. Next number is zero, zero two, zero zero two. My parcel number is zero six six, and the CPR number is zero 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 zero. Follow that. Yeah. Okay. Four zeros there at the end. Four zeros, there are four digits in the last, right? So you always remember, one digit, one digit, one digit, three digits, three digits, four digits. Now you'll see people enter this as 227266 without the four zeros, because those are the numbers, but it's really helpful after, just to think of it in terms of three pukas of single digits, Two pukas of three digits and one of four. Okay, awesome. While we're in here, I'm just going to show you this is the tax record. So my tax record will tell me tell us what our current tax bill is and what our tax history is, and then it has uh, home exemption information, and then it tells you what improvements are here. So there are three buildings on my property. And um, here's accessory information. Here is sales information. And you're going to go, what the heck? The price was 000000. zero, 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 zero. Fee conveyance was a quick claim deed. What did this person do, Mary? What were you up to? Well, it just shows you that I won two, three, four, five, six. I have a first mortgage and a second mortgage. And I refinanced both my first and second mortgage three times. Basically, what this says, right? So, because I just quick claim it in and out of my trust in order to do this. That's why there's a quick claim deed and why the price is zero. So, you just see that. So, you can see that the last time I refinanced was in 2016. Isn't that interesting? So, I still owe a lot on my mortgage because it's only three years old, right? Um, here's permit information. And um, here is sketches of the three units, which is pretty cool. Now, the one thing that you can't see in here that you can see in Realist is how much are the mortgages for? Yeah, that you can actually cool. see in Realist what the mortgages are, right? So if we go to back to here, this is the Realist button. And if we went into, oh, that's the one that wouldn't let us do its thing. That's the one that wouldn't let us yeah. with, the, with the Adobe. Yeah. Get into yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. All right. So um, now we have in our listing contract, we have the seller's name, and then we have an authorized representative and a title. What do you think those would be? We were signing for it. It's only if somebody else is signing. So. Uh, I just did a deal with a power of attorney, so the authorized representative was um, somebody else's name, and then their title was power of attorney. And then you put the seller's name again. No, well, the seller is up here, right? Yeah, that is the they, seller's name. The third line down. So the no, seller's no. name again. No. no. Why would there be? I don't know. Husband that's and what it wife. Says. <laughs> husband and wife. You mean there might be more than one seller? Okay. Oh, okay. I thought you put them all on the first line. Okay, got it. Yeah, so there's room for three sellers here. 
if you have a property that has more than three sellers, you would want to go, you could either split it up, put two here, and on this one say C addendum or addendum one for additional um, sellers, or you can just do it right at top, C addendum one for all sellers and signatures. And then, that way you have all names on one place, either way. Okay, up to you. So that's how we do that here. Um, so the seller doesn't need a title, he is the seller, right? But, so I don't need to fill anything more out here because Sam is my seller. So you don't put like husband and then wife? No. Or anything? Okay. No. Mm -hmm. That is not germane to mm -hmm. the sale, right? He's an owner, he's a seller, she's a seller. So if I put um, Betty Sneed over here on the second line, they're sellers. That's their title. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, the next section is about agency, right? Agency is pretty straightforward at this point. However, if you haven't talked about dual agency before, now's the time to talk about dual, dual agency, right? So um, this is, I'm going to be representing you as the seller. Um, a buyer in most instances, 92% of real estate is sold with realtors, right? So is that a realtor is going to be representing the buyer? And it's also possible that somebody else from Keller Williams brings the buyer. It's also possible that I, from doing open houses or the marketing and advertising I'll be doing, um, attract a buyer directly and the buyer wants to work with me. When that happens, either because another agent at Keller Williams or I bring the buyer, we are in what's called dual agency. And that means that I can continue to do for you and for the buyer everything that we do, we've had this conversation, except I can't guide you on the price that you should accept or the price that you should counter. So we're gonna have to have some conversations about that so that you feel comfortable about negotiating the transaction for you. But I can help you with public information, let you know the most current sales and what's gone into escrow and what's on the market. I can let you know, um, do all the communications between you and the buyer as I would normally. All of that stays. I can help answer all your questions. I just can't tell you confidential information and I can't guide you on this during the negotiations. So that's okay with you. So right here it says seller agrees, so it's already filled in, seller agrees uh, to dual agency. My preference is to have this conversation with the dual agency consent addendum, which is our not file. Um, however, it is an addendum, technically, 